All right, folks, if you're tuning in, you're probably in the same boat as me, gearing up for those procurement manager interviews. <laughs> and let's be real, they can be a whirlwind, right? Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. a mix of excitement and nerves for sure. Exactly. So to help us all navigate this, we're doing a deep dive into this career vids YouTube video. And let me tell you, this isn't your typical surface level advice. This is about really understanding what hiring managers are looking for. Yeah, you know those generic lists of skills you see everywhere, like must be organized, strong negotiator, all that. Oh, tell me about it. I feel like I've memorized those lists in my sleep. Well, this video goes way beyond that. It's not just about listing the skills, it's about the language you use to bring them to life. Well, that's interesting. So how you actually articulate those skills in an interview. Precisely. Like, instead of just saying, I'm organized, this video talks about using phrases like meticulously organized. Or instead of good at problem solving, they suggest something like, I thrive on analyzing complex situations and developing creative solutions. It's like you're speaking my language. Using those power words, those vivid verbs, it just makes your experience pop, right? Exactly. It paints a picture. It shows you're not just listing skills off a resume. You're actually embodying them. I'm already thinking about how to rephrase some of my own experiences. Now, one thing that really stood out in this video was this incredibly detailed 10-step procurement process they laid out. It's a solid framework. It's really clear, easy to follow. It's like they're handing you the playbook. In a way, they are. It shows a strong grasp of the entire procurement life cycle. But, and this is important. Okay, I'm listening. Don't just memorize those 10 steps verbatim and parrot them back in the interview. Oh, good point. So it's not just about regurgitating their process. Exactly. Procurement is all about being adaptable. Right. For, so maybe you have a situation where an 11th step is needed. Or your experience in a particular industry might mean you emphasize certain steps more than others. The key is to show you understand the process, but can also tailor it to different contexts. That's such a good point. Be adaptable. Make it your own. I like it. Now, they also kept mentioning systems at each stage of the process. What does that signal to you in the context of a procurement manager role? To me, system screams organization, documentation, potentially even specific software applications. So someone who can not only manage the procurement process, but also manage the tools that keep everything running smoothly. Exactly. Yeah. And this is where doing a little extra research could give you a real edge in an interview. Oh, like what? Give me some examples. Well, are you familiar with industry standard tools like SAP Ariba or Oracle Procurement Cloud? I've heard of them, but honestly, haven't had a chance to really dive in. See, that's what I mean. Even just familiarizing yourself with those platforms at a high level, it shows you're thinking ahead, you're proactive. It's like you're speaking my language. Yep. I'm all about staying one step ahead. Now. Let's get into the nitty gritty. The video tackles the dreaded, what's the most difficult aspect of procurement question. Oh, I always find that one tricky. How do you answer that honestly without shooting yourself in the foot? Right, it's a tough one. You want to acknowledge the challenges, but also showcase your ability to handle them effectively. The video's response, it focuses on the potential for external stakeholders to create roadblocks. Which is so true. I mean, how many times have we all been held up by a vendor who's been held up by a vendor who's slow to respond? Or a department that doesn't quite grasp the procurement process, right? It's like the universal struggle. It really is. But see, even though it's a common challenge, the way they frame it in the video is yeah. really smart. It shows they understand the realities of the role, but it doesn't come across as complaining. Right. It's like they're acknowledging the obstacle, but also implying they can handle it, right? Exactly. Yeah. They emphasize the importance of clear communication, building positive relationships with stakeholders, all that good stuff. Okay, so this is where it gets really tactical, right? Because anyone can say, oh yeah, I'm a people person, I'm great at communication. But how do you actually demonstrate that in an interview setting? That's where your prep comes in. Have those specific examples ready to go. Think of a time you faced a challenging stakeholder situation. How did you navigate it? What was the outcome? So instead of just saying, I'm a great communicator, you give them a concrete example. Like, in my previous role, we had a vendor who consistently missed deadlines. To address this, I implemented weekly check-in calls, clearly outlined expectations, and ultimately fostered a more productive working relationship. Something like that. Perfect example. It's specific, it showcases your problem-solving skills, and it highlights your ability to maintain those positive relationships even when things get tough. Okay, that's gold. I'm making a note of that. Specificity is key. Now, beyond the specific skills, the video also talks about these intangible qualities that hiring managers look for. Things like being enthusiastic, flexible, unwavering. 
It's almost like those are personality traits rather than hard skills. They are, but they're also signals. Signals about the company culture and the type of person who thrives there. Oh, I like that. Signals, like what? What are they trying to tell you? Well, if they're emphasizing flexibility, maybe it's a fast-paced environment with lots of last-minute changes. If they want someone unwavering, maybe it's a high-pressure role where they need someone who can stay focused and deliver under tight deadlines. So it's about reading between the lines, connecting those keywords to the company's needs, and seeing if you align with that, right? Exactly. And your job as a candidate is to show them you get it, that you've thought about how those qualities play out in a real-world setting. Have that story ready, the one that showcases your unwavering commitment or your ability to adapt on the fly. That's how you stand out. It's like you're reading my mind. Yeah. This is exactly the kind of tactical advice I was hoping for. Now, the video also goes into some really interesting detail about the interview process itself. Things like active listening, body language, even mirroring the interviewer's energy. It's like they're giving you a master class in building rapport. They are. And one thing they mentioned that I always recommend is the STAR method for structuring your answers. The STAR method. For our listeners who may not be familiar. Sure. STAR, it stands for Situation, Task, Action, Result. It's a way to tell a concise, impactful story that highlights your skills and accomplishments. So instead of just saying, I'm a good problem solver, you'd walk them through a specific situation, what your role was, the action you took, and the positive result you achieved. Right, exactly. It brings structure, clarity to your answers, which can be so helpful when you're in that high pressure interview environment. And honestly, don't underestimate practicing your answers beforehand. Oh yeah, the good old mock interview. I know it can feel a little silly, but it makes a difference. Huge difference. It helps you get comfortable with the material so you're not fumbling for words when the pressure's on. Confidence is key. Now, one thing they stressed in the video is the importance of asking thoughtful questions at the end of the interview. I think we've all been there. You're at the end of an interview, your mind goes blank, and you're like, ah, so what's the weather like here? Oh, I've totally been there. It happens to the best of us. But having a few good questions prepared beforehand, it makes all the difference. So from your experience, what kinds of questions really resonate with hiring managers, especially in the procurement field? Asking about their procurement strategy, key suppliers, even the challenges they're facing. It shows you're thinking strategically. It tells them you're not just there for a job, you're there to make a real contribution. So it's about aligning yourself with their goals, showing them you're already thinking like a member of the team. Precisely. And don't be afraid to ask about things like company culture professional development opportunities, even what the interviewer enjoys most about working there. Remember, it's a two-way street. You're evaluating them just as much as they're evaluating you. Oh, such a good point. It's about finding the right fit on both sides. But before we wrap up this whole interview prep section, I want to circle back to something you mentioned earlier about staying ahead of the curve in procurement. We've talked about the skills, the strategies, but what about the big picture? What does the future hold for this field? What do aspiring procurement professionals need to be prepared for? Ah, the million dollar question. The procurement landscape is changing rapidly. The video touches on this, the growing importance of data analysis, automation, even AI. So it's not just about negotiating contracts and managing suppliers anymore. There's this whole tech side to it now. Absolutely. It's about leveraging data to make smarter sourcing decisions streamlining processes through automation, potentially even using AI to predict future trends and mitigate risks. It's a whole new ballgame. Okay, that's a lot to take in. It sounds like procurement is becoming increasingly data-driven and tech-savvy. So for someone just starting out, it can feel a bit overwhelming, right? I get it. It can seem like a lot. But the key takeaway here is continuous learning. Familiarize yourself with data analysis tools. Stay up to date on emerging technologies. Never stop seeking out new knowledge. It's like that saying, the only constant is change, right? <laughs> Especially in a field as dynamic as procurement. And that's where resources like this career vids video come in, right? It's a fantastic starting point for understanding the fundamentals and getting a feel for the evolving landscape of procurement. 100%. Think of it as a launch pad. Right. We've unpacked the key takeaways, highlighted the essential skills, hopefully giving you the confidence to go out there and rock those interviews. I love that. A launch pad into the world of procurement. It really is. And, you know, speaking of confidence, I think that's something that really shines through in an interview. It's not just about what you say, it's how you say it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Enthusiasm is contagious. If you're genuinely excited about the opportunity and passionate about procurement, that's going to resonate with the interviewer for sure. No doubt about it.
But before we wrap up our deep dive on this career vids video, any final words of wisdom for our listeners as they head into those procurement interviews? Any last minute pep talk? Hmm, let's see. I'd say, first and foremost, don't underestimate the power of preparation. We've covered a lot of ground today from those technical skills to the nuances of the interview process itself. So take the time to really absorb these insights, maybe even revisit some of the key points we discussed. Yes, re-listen to the episode. Exactly. And practice those answers. Do a mock interview with a friend or colleague. You'd be surprised how much smoother it'll feel when you're actually in the interview chair. Practice makes perfect, as they say. Couldn't agree more. And, you know, even if this particular opportunity doesn't work out, don't get discouraged. Every interview, it's a learning experience. It's true. Take the feedback to heart, refine your approach, and keep putting yourself out there. That's such an important reminder. This career journey, it's not always a straight line, is it? There might be detours, unexpected turns, but those skills you're developing, the ability to analyze, strategize, build relationships, those are valuable assets no matter where your path leads. 100%. The world needs people who can think critically, solve problems, navigate complex situations. These are skills that translate across industries, across roles. It's so true. So soak up the knowledge, embrace those challenges, and never be afraid to ask questions along the way. Absolutely. Asking questions shows you're curious, you're engaged, you're eager to learn. And trust me, those qualities, those are universally valued. Beautifully said. Well, it sounds like we've reached the end of our deep dive. For our listener out there, wherever you are in your procurement journey, just remember, you've got this. We're rooting for you. We are. Keep learning, keep growing, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible in this incredible field of procurement. Love it. And for those of you eager to dive even deeper into the fascinating world of procurement, make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow the deep dive wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be back soon with another episode packed with insights and advice to help you navigate the ever-evolving world of procurement. Until then, happy learning.